Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick and today guys we're going to be jumping down into the world of Bitcoin, giving you guys a brief update as to what I think is going on and what I would expect to happen next. As I get into this video, if you find it useful and informative, hit the like button. I do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications and in doing so you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Now if you have not yet uh, joined us in Discord, the link is in the description down below. It's a fantastic community talking crypto 24 7 it's completely free and i don't think you'll be disappointed by what you find down there so why not go ahead and check that out you'll also find links to our patreon services if you are looking to get a little bit more from the crypto space then why not check those out you'll also find links such as bitget and bybit and ledger and nexo and various other different offers and things that are going on uh, within the cheeky community so check those out if any of them are of interest to you okay let's get on into this right so uh, bitcoin paired up with usdt on the hourly chart binance is the data source now for the most part we obviously have broken down as we kind of spoke about yesterday um, with these kind of demand and uh, supply zones right so up here we have a supply zone also known as resistance uh, down here we have a demand zone uh, also known as support now in the middle this is an area that was both okay so we can see here this was supply okay or resistance we broke it we obviously failed to kind of really stay above it and over this side we broke through it again okay so basically chewed through all of the supply and then turned it into a demand zone as in we were working into here and turned it into support so resistance turned support then we broke back through and right now it's back into a resistance line another supply zone so we find ourselves stepping down okay so we can see that we broke up into this higher range up here was the resistance down here was the support and then we broke the support and we're back down to where we were previously now the obvious thing with this is the uh, common kind of patterns that you see in the space now i don't like doing these things but i'm going to show you for the purpose of this video okay so here we can kind of see that we have potentially a shoulder and a head Okay, we can pull this down and we're going to level this somewhere in here. It could be anywhere, really. We don't really know where this is 100% going to go, but I'm just going to kind of put it straight to make it uh, look as neat as possible. Okay, and then we'll come up into a shoulder, for example, and then come back down and complete it. This would be a head and shoulder pattern. Okay, now it can, see it can be wonky. It can go on the side and all those kind of things. The reason I bring this up is we've had three waves come up here and we are potentially going to come down, move up here. I then break back down again and create a head and shoulder pattern. That whole head and shoulder pattern, of course, is simply just three waves going up, or three waves coming down, or um, three waves coming up and five waves going down. Okay, so we're not going to really focus in on the pattern so much, but people might speculate that you guys head and shoulder patterns. Essentially, I already know this because we already have the Elliott wave to help us understand what's going on, right? And um, so knowing that we have these three waves up here, the 21K that we've been talking about previously is still technically in play. This is not a complete uh, disaster to say that's not going to happen. Um, but it is one of those things that we, until proven otherwise, we can't really rule it out. So it's there, um, but we won't really be talking about it in this particular video. Okay, so let's focus in on this recent structure here. Okay, so this is going to move to the downside. Okay, so as I said, we've kind of gone past this um, previous area of support. It's now resistance. We can see that here. And, you know, the expectations might be to get rejected from this range and move down a tad further, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to walk you through what's going on here. So the first thing we want to do is grab a Fibonacci retracement tool. We're going to take it from this low wick just here. And we're going to put it onto this high one just over this side. We're then going to move this over to that green candle wick just there. And then we're going to come down and we can see that we've come down to the one point. 618 now the 1.618 acts as support but obviously we breached it this means that this entire structure here is actually tracking in a five wave fashion so i'll go ahead and remove the fib and i'll go ahead and draw these waves on we come down here with wave one we come up into wave two we've come down here into wave three we're up into wave four hitting the resistance we come down into the final fifth wave support is obviously down here but what we will do is we'll go ahead and do our typical areas that we focus on okay so when we have five wave structures just make this a little bit bigger okay we look for and um, the wave four and then we say the wave four is going to typically retrace between 1.236 and 1.618 now the other thing to consider here is that maybe just maybe this wave four is not finished okay um so invalidation of the fifth wave down lower would be set up here at $19,874.81, at least according to Binance and the USDT pair. Okay, so right up here would be that area where we would consider maybe 
um, we would actually have an invalidation. Okay, so it's not maybe, it's actually, that would be the invalidation. Wave 4 couldn't cross this area. So if Wave 4 hasn't finished, then the other thing that we want to consider is we should be expecting three waves, right? One, two, and then three come back into this resistance and then get rejected, okay? That would then change the outlook of where our Wave 5 is going to go because Wave 4 is a uh, wave five is measured by the distance of wave four so the higher the wave four goes the lower that wave five goes okay so i'm going to go through what it looks like at this particular moment in time however it's possible that we actually haven't finished this wave four and if so i'll go and show you the second uh, area as well which first of all what i'll do is i'll just move this fib over to here so we can remember to do that okay so if wave four has finished right now, then our expectations are to move down into this little range just here. Okay, this little range basically is between 19,121 and 19,244. That would be this little range just down here as symbolized within our little box. Okay, so I'm trying to get that as close as I can to those numbers and it's not letting me, so it's going to be 45. Okay, so that's going to be right there. Okay, now that would be if the top of this wave four is already in. Hypothetically, though, we might not. And if we have got a three wave structure that goes to a one to one ratio, then we might push a little bit higher towards 19,742. And if we do that, then that's going to change our fifth wave expectations to the downside. OK, we already know where the invalidation is. So if we invalidate, we don't have to worry about the downside. But if we don't, then this would be the next range. And the next range actually is something that I think is really interesting it overlaps obviously with our first range um, but it comes in right down here at 19,063 and 19,221 now this gets us very very close to all of these areas down here where we have previously found ourselves with support so this actually is a closer one to it so therefore I'm thinking to myself maybe we haven't finished this uh, fourth wave up maybe we have to go up a little bit more before we can go down hit into this low range and then hit into this little range down here for the support level and then bounce okay now, that is just this five wave structure. We have ignored one of the key things here, and that is this little drop on this side. What's going on here? If this was an ABC structure, then actually there's something else going on. So let's grab another fib and run it onto here as well, right? So it's all great and looking at the here and the now, what's going to happen in the next few hours, but what's going to happen over the next few days? That's going to be another kind of uh, point of view that we should probably acknowledge. And well, we haven't hit the 1.618 yet. Okay, so if we do complete these structures though, and we complete this fifth wave down lower, then we've actually gone ahead and gone past our 1.618. That would allow us to then look at this as a slightly bigger five wave structure going one two down here somewhere for three up for four down for five taking us down lower right and then of course we would acknowledge that our invalidation if i actually put it onto the correct wick would be down here at 19,730. wave four couldn't cross that level there for example okay so there's a few things to be thinking about let's go ahead and i'm actually going to just put a little price label right on this one um, it's actually at 88 cents as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just put that onto 88 cents. So it's exactly uh, on the fib number as I have drawn it. So I'll go ahead and delete it. Right. So that there would be our trigger point. Uh, I'll remove this one off of here as well. And I'll remove this one off of there. So we kind of get an idea that you know Bitcoin itself is going to be volatile over the weekend. If anything, we have a potential push to the upside here just to finish that off. That would then give us a nice low fifth wave point, which will then allow us to rally up into a fourth wave before dropping down into a final fifth wave. And then once all of that is done, just to kind of add fuel to the fire, what happens when you complete five waves is you go up in three. OK, and then, of course, from there, you might then start to expect another five waves down and so forth. We'll talk about that at later stages, though. Um, so essentially, you know, this isn't like the, the end of crypto. Bitcoin's going down massively, etc. But this five wave structure all of a sudden starts to maybe think about maybe we are going to have ourselves this pull to the downside, go up in a three wave fashion just up here. Um, probably up a little bit higher let's just make this really neat okay um, right up here that's our three waves and then we, of course we potentially have that five wave drop right we'll draw that in and we do something like this right now going back to the beginning of this video when we had our head and shoulder pattern let's go ahead and talk about what this might look like we have our shoulder here we have our head up here oh i did that far too fast <laughs> um hypothetically this here could be our uh, end point of our um our head and the beginning of our shoulder going up and then coming back down to the neckline okay and you can all of a sudden start to see that maybe you know that's not going to be 
going to be that low. Maybe I'll pull it up to mean more level here, for example, and you kind of get the idea that actually three waves up completes our right shoulder, five waves down, breaches the neckline, retests the neckline in a wave four, drop down afterwards, right? Anyone who's familiar with head and shoulder patterns will know exactly what I'm talking about there. If you're not, um, then join us in Discord. I'm sure we've got some material on it. Um, but essentially what it's done here is I've drawn out Elliott Wave Theory based on structures and what happens when these structures appear. And actually it ties into the pattern traders, which obviously is your head and shoulder pattern. So I'm going to speculate too much on it, but that's kind of what my expectations are on BTC. Now, of course, we want to go ahead and see if any of this actually makes sense with some indicators, right? So obviously just done price action analysis here. Let's go ahead and actually take a look at the stochastic RSI. Now the stochastic RSI is quite high. It's uh, overbought on our one hour chart. Okay. So this means that we are running out of momentum and that would move here for this way four, looking less and less likely, more likely that we actually have this move to the downside a little bit sooner, but anything is possible, right? So we can be up here for quite some time. We can rally up. It's just an indication that there's momentum behind the, uh, the price, which is starting to deviate away. Now here's the obvious, right? Um, let's just zoom in on this right away. Okay, so here on this hourly chart, what do we see? Well, we see the price going up right in here. Okay, and we can see that the stochastic RSI is going down over here. Okay, this is a divergence. This basically means that we're running out of momentum to the upside and we should actually start to expect a reversal. Now that reversal can come way up here in this C wave, doesn't have to be right now, but just know that there is a divergence occurring. So this is running out of steam. This is why we're seeing this resistance line appear right in here as well. Okay, so if we're gonna push up anyway, it's not going to be massive and we will start to see a bit of a push to the downside. You're talking one percent if we are to hit that C wave after all. Okay. Um so on our hourly stochastic, that's basically saying that we have to have this fifth wave come down. But what about the large time frames? Well, they're actually okay. They're indicating that this fourth wave is something that we should be expecting. We should start to see a bit of a push to the upside when we come back down to the resistance. The eight hourly charts also coming down here, not too concerned over that. The daily obviously needs a deeper correction. So ultimately we'll be looking at pulling back down into this area before rallying into three waves that again allow us to then pull back down later. Okay, so from our stochastic RSI, everything actually makes a lot of sense. It's not too bad. Um, let's go ahead and throw on some order blocks. You can see order blocks down here and up here, uh, right inside our demand zone and supply zone. Ironically, nothing changes there. These are all around the previous uh, swing highs and swing low points. Um, so pretty standard stuff, nothing too uh, unusual. We throw the liquidity in. We can see actually there's a lot of liquidity that could be inside this little range down here. So we could come down a little bit further um, and see that grabbed. Um, and on the way up yeah there's actually a lot of liquidity on that c wave you can see it right there zoom in you can see these kind of dashed lines in here these green ones um, that's actually liquidating all of the people who go in short all the way up into where our expected c wave is you'll notice that there's nothing after our c wave this basically tells us that actually this is going to be the theoretical top and there's nothing really else there to grab. So um, reversal here, we obviously have the divergence and we obviously do see um, some positions that are opening up down at low end here that also could be liquidated when we move back down. So I think actually those indicators are confirming our initial kind of price action analysis. Um, so for the most part, that's our my, those are my expectations. Um, I'll leave the video there. If you have found it useful and informative, hit the like button. I do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications. And in doing so, you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. With all that said, done and out of the way, I hope everyone has a fantastic day and I'll catch you all in the next one.